Welcome back to the wizard shop and today is the big reveal. I've been telling you guys that I purchased a vehicle and I've been kind of saving it so you guys could witness the glory of how beautiful it is and some of you may say I would never drive that car. I'm waiting on Mrs. Wizard. She should be pulling that up here in a minute and we're going to check that car out right after this. What are you doing? I was enjoying a nice cool breeze. We need to get the car on the lift and show people the, the really cool car I just got. I guess, but maybe you should first show them this really cool fan we just got. Yeah, let's take a look at the fan. Yeah. This is actually a fan that Ben Pack has sent me. They supplied all my lifts in here and also the mid-rise lift. And they're also going to be sending a few more cool products here pretty quickly. but. They seen that I had an old dilapidated old swamp cooler fan and they were like, Car Wizard, you need one of our new products. This is the Cool Boss. You can see it on the Binpack website and from there you can check the distributors and find out where you could buy one. But this thing is amazing. It's a little smaller than the big unit that we had, but it actually moves more air and it's colder. I would definitely, if I was in the market to buy one, this is, this is what I would buy. This is the real ticket here. Some people have said, why don't you air condition the shop, Car Wizard? And I used to work at a machine shop that was air conditioned, and it was about this size. And the owner came by one day and he says, my electric bill is usually 800 bucks a month, but when we run the ACs, it's 7,000 a month. There's no way I'm spending five or six grand a month on an electric bill to cool. It's not feasible. What profits I would make in the shop will be gone keeping it cool. I'm not going to do that, but this is the ticket. The other day it was really hot in the shop. It was about 90, 92 in the shop. We turned this thing on, we ran it for a while, probably for about an hour, and it dropped almost 10 degrees. It was 82, 84 in that range. I can't complain. And all it takes is water. You hook a garden hose to it and a fan, and it, it's an evaporative cooler is what it does. It evaporates water nice cool air coming out of here. It's the next best thing to AC in a large shop. Now let's get back to this thing, this beautiful, beautiful car. Here it is guys in all of its glory, all of its shiny new looking glory. This is a 1987 Mercury Grand Marquis. I actually was scanning marketplace. I've been looking for a larger car that's comfortable but not ten or fifteen thousand dollars for a nice car. And I just, I was actually looking at Lincoln Town cars and some other cars, and I kept coming back to this one. I was like, you know, it's not a Lincoln, it's a Mercury, I know that, but man, this thing looks brand new. And I'd go scan for other cars and look at it, and then I would again come back to this one. And I was like, something, I, I've got to at least check out this car. And I contacted the seller, and the next comment that he made was, I know who you are, you're the car wizard. I was like, yes, yes, I'm the car wizard, but I, I'm interested in your car. And he was all excited to, to meet me. I was like, well, I'll tell you what, bring me the car up here, and if it looks the part and is the part, very likely I will buy it. So he did. He brought the car up, and I checked it out. There was a few little issues that I've already fixed, and we'll go over that here in a minute. It had the cruise control didn't work. This window motor was messed up, and a few other little small issues. And he wanted like 3500 bucks for the car, and I said, based on a few things that are broken, 2800 cash right now, and the guy said, sold. $2,800, and this thing is like, this is like what, what you hear about in, the, in stories you read online, grandma's car. Grandma passed away, and the car is immaculate. It does have 130,000 miles, but I almost would rather have a higher mileage car than one that's just been sitting year after year after year. This one's been maintained. It's been very well looked after. And we'll, we'll see that when we get it on the lift. There is zero leaks on this car. It's amazing. There are two or three flaws with this car, but that aside, I was amazed when I saw the condition and I knew I had to have it. Let's take a look around the car. Looking at the front of the vehicle, it has some little pits in the paint. With 130,000 miles and over 30 years old, that doesn't surprise me. But the bumper is rust free, shiny like new. All the trim pieces are present and intact. 
Look at the hood, guys. Look at the, the paint on the hood. Flawless. With a capital F. Flawless. Most of, 99% of the paint on this car is flawless. Let's go down the side here. It has brand new tires, the previous guy that had it before me. I think his name was Jordan, out of Wichita. Thank you for your car, Jordan. He, uh, he had two tires put on. They're Mastercrafts. They're not the best brand in the world, but they're smooth. They do the job. I don't need Pirellis on an old grandma car. As you go down the side here, Again, the name of the game is Flawless Paint. No dents, no scratches. The glass is clean. Look at the roof, guys. The roof, or the roof, however you call it. Flawless. It's glossy and shiny, almost like showroom. The vinyl top, still soft and pliable. Like new. These little side lights, I'm not sure what you call them, opera lights or, or what, they work. Check it out. You don't find that on a 2020 car. That's really cool. That's a nice shirt. Yeah, thank you. Did Ru you do the challenge? No, we didn't do the challenge, but there is a video that we did on Route 66. We did follow some of the highway. You ought to check it out. Click the link here and you can check out that video. We actually traveled some of Route 66. This would have been a really cool car to travel Route 66 in. Really, really neat. Let's continue on around the sides here. Original hubcaps. Like I said, new tires. One thing I've been finding, like you see here when I open the, the fuel door, these little decals, all of them are present on this car. They're not faded or ripped or torn or peeling off. Everything is here, all the stickers. And we'll see once we start looking around some more. And we come around to the back. We can see that it was bought new in Capital City dealership in Jefferson City, Missouri. And it's almost in the same condition it was when it was new in Jefferson City, Missouri, when it was purchased. Again, the trunk, the paint is flawless, no scratches. No rust bubbles, no dents. In a previous video I actually just did using the old 69 Fleetwood, I gave you guys a video on cleanliness. When this guy brought the car up for me to look at, it looked like this. It was flawless. And I, in that Fleetwood video I showed you when you open the trunk, this is what you should see. clean carpet. Almost factory new. You can tell that there's been some items in here. It's not perfect, like 100%, but it's like over 90% perfect. There's a spare, which is probably the original, but still holding air. It would get you home, I guess. And we'll lift up the carpet and see what we see under there. Shiny, like new paint. Zero rust. Zero. You guys are starting to get excited. Wow, this car is really the part. And that's the same feeling that I had when I first looked at this car. After I looked it over, I had to have it. No, it's, it's not a Rolls Royce. It's not fancy. It's not... But it is so nice to drive. We'll go on a quick drive here towards the end of the video and show you. There is one flaw I talked about right here. The seller told me that he took it to a car show or out, so I'm not sure where and someone opened their door and wham right on the side. He, he said it made him feel sick to his stomach. I bet it did. I bet he felt really sick. I would feel sick. I would probably almost cry. I was like, why? So there is one flaw there. But as we go down the rest of the side of this vehicle, we'll as you can see here, original stickers and decals in place. And while we're here, let's take a look at the, the back seat area. The seats are rip-free, tear-free. They're not dirty. They're very clean and like new condition. On the back deck back here in the back window, you can see where the speakers are. There's little dark spots. I think that's just from dust collecting on the speakers. 
I'm not sure how to clean that short of tearing it all apart, and I'm not going to do that. The floor mats are not original, but they match the interior, and they're very heavy, rugged mats, and I like that because I'm a mechanic, and I get metal shavings in my boots or oil or whatnot, and it's not going to get in the carpet. All the door panels, switches, buttons, chrome, lights, everything is perfect. Flawless. That closes like an old W126 Mercedes. That's what it sounds like to me. You know, a new car doesn't do that. It's like a bank vault latch. It's really nice. And again, we've already seen the roof and everything, but it's on this side as well. It is immaculate. We'll finish around the body here, and then we'll open the hood, and then we'll finish the interior. But again, no rust bubbles. No dents, no scratches, other than the one that we showed you back there. And we come back around to the front again. Isn't this amazing, guys? You just don't find these cars on the road that much. They've either been into a demolition derby and been destroyed, or they've been to the crusher and already crushed up, or they're in the ba someone's backyard, rusted out, the engine doesn't run anymore, and they're, they're cars of a bygone era, they're forgotten. This one, I had to save it. I have said before in many videos I'll probably keep this car and I end up not keeping it. Oh, really? Yeah, this one is amazing. I'm afraid to sell it because the next person might put 20 inch wheels on it and hack the interior up and put a big stereo or... I wouldn't want that to happen to this car. It's, it's so nice. Let's take a look under the hood. Car right, wizard. You scared your stove away. A little grasshopper. We'll just leave him there. And there is the EFI 5 liter V8. This engine is so smooth, it's so nice. It's not a powerhouse. It only has 150 horsepower, which was actually up from the previous versions of this engine that were throttle body injected, 130 and 140. But they tuned this engine for torque lots of torque down low, 270 foot-pounds of torque, which is really pretty good for a small engine. Like I said, it has 130,000 miles, and the engine runs like a top. It runs perfect. It has the AOD four-speed overdrive transmission, which also shifts very good. It's actually a Jasper transmission. It's been replaced before in the past before I got it. You could have gotten a 5.8 liter, a bigger motor in this in these years, but they never fuel injected that engine. It was always carbureted. I am not a fan of carburetors. There was a time and a day when I liked them. They're easy to tune, they're easy to mess with. But all these linkages and settings and things that all can be adjusted, I don't want to adjust all that stuff. I want to turn the key and go. And when you get these set up, they do work good. I'm a fuel injection wizard. I love fuel injection. I can figure out what's wrong on any fuel injected vehicle. Modern fuel injected vehicle, not the Bosch CIS garbage. I'm talking about modern multi-port fuel injection. I would rather fix a carburetor than Bosch CIS, but this is, this is the past. At some point we're going to have to let it be the past because the ethanol fuels that they use, carburetors do not like that. So let's move this out of the way. In 87, they made 120,000 of these roughly, and there's quite a few of the road. That's just the Grand Marquis. That's not include the family of cars that this car was made the platform on, which is Crown Victorias and Lincoln Town cars and Continentals. But whoever had it before me did do some maintenance. They put a new battery. You can tell it's had a tune up with cap rotor wires and plugs. It's got brand new belts on it. And here we go again, original decals, stickers, all still intact. One thing I really like about this engine is the ease of repair. The AC compressor is right here, easy to get to. It's not buried underneath the engine. Here's all the ignition system right here. There's the coil, there's the, co the control module, the distributor, there's the alternator. This rusty area down here is the water pump. Everything is easy to get to. Now I mentioned one of the things that didn't work when I bought this car was the cruise control and it ended up being the control module that's under the dash. It's just a little box that's 
under the dash, a black box with two connectors going to it. This is the original servo that came out of it. And I was inspecting the old one and I could see this little arm right here. This broke, this plastic arm. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe that's the issue. It can't work any other way if the arm's broke. So I put a new servo on, as you can see right here, and it still did not solve the problem. I had zero cruise control. There's only four things that can cause this not to work on cruise control on the Crown Vix, the Grand Marquis, the Lincoln Town Car these years, the servo, a vacuum leak, power and ground, which is, could be a fuse, or the amplifier module under the dash. I suppose it could be the buttons on the steering wheel, but that's highly unlikely. Of those items, I replaced the servo, like I said, no luck. I pulled the module out. You really can't see if it's bad or not. I did some tests. There was powers, grounds, my vacuum switch under, under the dash was good. All the vacuum was good. I knew it was the module. I replaced the module and voila, my cruise is working perfectly again. So that's fixed. Hey, Car Wizard, how much did that cost you? The module was $70 and the servo, I think, was $80. So it really wasn't too bad. There are some things on here like the module, the cruise control module. You're not going to find that at your local friendly auto parts store. Nobody has those anymore. And that's some of the pitfalls I've talked about in the past of 80s cars and early 90s. They just don't make this stuff or remanufacture this stuff anymore. But I did find one brand new in the box, never installed on eBay. And it worked. So we're good to go there. Well, let's get this hood closed. So we'll check out the last bit of the interior and then we'll get it on the lift. There is right there by Mrs. Wizard a crack on the dash by the speaker. That's the second flaw. It's small. I'm not going to tear apart the dash or try to fix it. I'm just going to leave it alone. And I don't really want to put a carpet or a dash mat up there that doesn't, it, to me it looks tacky. The rest of the dash is so nice, I'll probably just leave it alone. It has the original stereo in it and it works perfectly. The heat and AC works perfectly on this car. Nice cold AC and nice hot heat. I gave Hoovy a ride in this car and I mentioned maybe upgrading the radio to a Bluetooth compatible radio. And he looked at me and he says, Wizard, if you take this original stereo out, he says, I will be very angry with you. Leave it alone. So he's right. I will probably just leave that be. It sounds good. I have bought a Bluetooth module that will fit up inside the dash that will tie into the antenna on that. So I can at least listen to tunes through Bluetooth still. But he's right, I should leave it alone and leave it stock. And when you turn the lights on, it has one really cool feature I love about these era of cars. It's the glowing green gauges. It looks so vintage, it's so awesome. It's not bright blue or white red gauges like today's cars. It's a soft green glow. It's so nice and easy on the eyes. The headliner on this car, from front to back, there's no cigarette burns, there's no scratch marks. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Gosh, Car Wizard, it feels kind of like we're sitting on the sofa. Yeah, it feels like a sofa, and that's what I like about this car. The few times I've driven it home already, after a long day of work, standing and walking around all in here, this car is really good to me. My, my back's hurting, my knees are hurting. It's so nice, and I didn't have to spend $47,000 for it. It was cheap, and it's like new. Like Mrs. Wizard said, it's like a couch. And these seats up front as well are in very good shape, like new. Nice velour seats. I just reached under the seat and found this, it's brown. I don't know what it is. It's root beer. It tastes just like root beer. Why is it in a water bottle though? Well, it's pretty good though. Okay, 
there's my green little grasshopper friend. I guess he's going to be part of the video today. Some people would get a phone book and smash him, but I'm not going to do that. He's, he's a cool little guy. Let's get this car on the lift, and let's take a look on the underneath of this beautiful grandma car. Oh, and Crazy D and Junior Mint have officially named this car Grandma. They say, you want me to do an oil change on Grandma or this or that Grandma? I, I guess that's the name, Grandma. Okay, let's get it on the lift. And I pushed it with my hand because it's my car and I know this thing's built like a tank. It's not going to crack and crumble by pushing on it. Are you guys ready to see a 30-something year old car with zero leaks? Let's take a look. Look at this cavern here. It's just you could almost curl up inside of there and take a nap. That's where the AC condenser is. It's got a few bugs on it, but it's not too bad. All of this room, that's, that's nice. That's really cool. I could get in here and fix the latch. I could fix all kinds of things really easily. Hey, car wizard. Wasn't that the kind of area that, like, you know, small animals would go looking for heat in the winter, like cats and small dogs? Yeah, you want to keep an eye on that if you have a car with cavernous areas like this. Animals can get in there and try to hide in the winter. Here's our charcoal canister. Just hanging there by the wheel. Kind of odd. I guess it works. And right through this hole here, you can see the radiator. That's a fairly new radiator, which doesn't surprise me with the age. As you can see the, the numbering on the belts, these belts are new. Still has the old smog pump on it, it's still working. I'm not going to remove that as long as it's working still. Here's the oil filter and the oil pan. Again, they're not leaking. The, the interesting thing about these oil pans on these cars, the Crown Vic, the Lincoln Town Car, and the Grand Marquise, is they have two drain plugs. Here's number one. Here's number two. So if you have one of these cars and you're doing oil changes, make sure you do both of those. And we'll move our way back. This is the Jasper transmission we talked about. And it's been, I don't know how long ago it's been replaced, but it shifts perfectly and works really good. And no issues with that. Nice dry oil pan. Here's some catalytic converters and the air injection pipes. All still intact. That means it's not tampered with or customized or modified. Before we move any further back, let's check these wheels out. Looks like it's got brand new pads and rotors on it. Nice and tight. I did put new shocks on it. The front ones were shot. New pads and rotors. Nice and tight. No issues there. I'm really surprised underneath this car for its age. It's been very well taken care of. Look at the floorboards here. Nice and rust free. This must have had a leak years ago and they didn't clean it. It's not even wet, it's like gum. Like gooey, I don't know what that is. But it's not a leak that's current, whatever it was. We did have to weld the exhaust here. It was starting to crack. It's an ugly weld, but it's better than replacing the muffler and it holds up and it doesn't leak. It'll last for a while until I can replace the muffler, but I don't need to right now. Dry shaft, nice and tight. The shocks in the back are still decent. They're older shocks, but they're not leaking any oil out and it rides nice. And you can see right here, coil springs all the way around. It does not have leaf springs on this car at all. They started doing that in, no. This is part of the Panther platform after the late 70s when it went into the early 80s. They did away with the leaf springs and went to a live rear axle. 
differential's dry, it's not leaking. We just changed the fluid on it and it was old dirty fluid, but it's nice and fresh now. The brakes were recently replaced not long ago. We did put wheel cylinders on it because one was starting to seep. It was this side that was leaking over here. Not anymore though. Nice new wheel cylinders. Drum brakes in the back. Here's our big trunk area. Here's the gas tank and the trunk and the big heavy frame, beefy frame. No rust. No rust. Factory exhaust is really, really clean and good shape. If you're going to have rust on one of these cars, it's going to be on the inside of panels like this. It's going to be holes where you can fit your hand in, just like on the other side as well. Or the outside of the floor pans that we just looked at over here, which are rust free, but those can have holes in them on an older car. But other than that, it's like I said, it's in good shape. Let's go ahead and get this car on the ground. Now we're on the ground, and this is the bin pack lifts I just talked about a minute ago. They are very heavy duty lifts, 10,000 pound lifts, very high quality. Bin pack is the way to go. There's so many other cheap brands out there, some of them from China, here or there, no name brands. They don't even put the name on the side of them because there really is no company to represent. But these are the real deal. Very happy with these lifts. We talked about taking this for a drive. Let's get in it and let's do that. Check out these gauges, the little warning lights when I turn them on. It's almost like a Christmas tree. It's kind of neat. They glow like a Christmas tree. Starts right up every time. Let's turn on the AC. Okay, we'll get ready to take this thing on a little cruise here, but I just wanted to mention, to me, this is the perfect combination of old school land yachts with modern technology. This is about as new as you can go, the late 80s, and still retain the old floaty boat land yachts. But it's old enough that you still get the modern technology, you still get fuel injection, cruise, electronic cruise control, and all the nice features. After this, it starts to go where they do away with the boxy style. They start going more rounded and more modules and more gadgets. And before this, you get the old gas guzzler super huge land yachts. This is the perfect right in the middle to me. It's, everything comes together with a really nice vehicle to me. Let's go take it for our spin here. I've mentioned to some of you before that we're going to take this out of town and you say, well, this doesn't look like a town. Well, the speed limit's 40 and the city cops, that's still within city limits here, will be happy to give me a ticket if I exceed the 40 mile an hour city speed limit on this road. This is the outskirts of Newton. There's not a lot of houses and things. There's just warehouses and buildings and a few country houses. This thing shifts so smooth, you can barely even feel it shift. Let's try out the radio. Yep, works good. It does have a long hood on it, but it's not 30 feet long. It's just long enough to give you that feeling of the old school land yachts. It rides so nice, floats right along. Nothing harsh about this car. Nice, easy steering. We have finished the power window that I mentioned that didn't work. There's little plastic rollers inside the, the regulator that go bad. It's all working good now. So here we see the 55 mile an hour speed limit. That is the end of the city. Now we're going into the country. All I hear is wind. I don't even have the... I don't even hear the engine roaring or anything, really. We're just floating along like on a cloud. So nice. Just melts the stress away for me at the end of the day.
It does get up and go if you want it to, though. Up to 65 that fast. Smooth. A lot of the buttons and switches and dials in here are from the early 80s Ford, and they used them all the way cleared in the 2000s. They didn't change them. They just ran with all the switch gear they used, which is, I guess, smart. It's good for, good for business. Try out the old horn. It works. For the price I paid for this car, I can't even get a good used Camry that rides this good and is in this great condition. It really was a no-brainer. Wasn't that a really nice ride, guys? It's a really nice car. I knew when I bought this car, you guys would definitely want to check this car out. It is really, really nice. Some of you that watch these videos, actually a lot of you are in your 30s, late 20s, early 30s. You gotta think when you were a baby, this is what was new. And this one still looks new, amazingly. So thanks for following along. Hope you guys enjoyed the, the tour of Grandma. If you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop, check out my Amazon Affiliates link in the description below. All my tools are listed there for sale. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, I really recommend you do that now. We've got many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.